All right, this is a great question that's been asked by one of my students, and I would like to show her the answer uh, instead of just typing it up. So maybe it'll be helpful, more easy to understand. So um, we're trying to figure out the reference angle of 32 pi over 25 radians, and I'm just going to fill in the blank. The first thing you have to do is decide where, what quadrant 32 pi over 25 lies in. So I need to estimate what 32 pi over 25 is and then see between which two angles that lies when you're on the unit circle. So if I come here and I do 32 pi divided by 25, I get the number 4.02. So this is approximately 4.02. Now this is just set up so I can answer the question. Figure out what quadrant we're in. Now on the unit circle, um, the, the circle is divided up into four quadrants. We got pi here, 0, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2, right? So I know that pi is about 3.14, etc. And let's see what pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2 is. Let's take a look at that one. So um, 3 pi divided by 2, that gives me 4.7. So this is about 4.7, etc. So I can see that 4.02 is between 3.14 and 4.7. So that means that this angle lies in quadrant 3. So if I'm just going to like approximate the terminal side to be right there, and that angle is 32 pi over 25, that guy right there. All right, now the reference angle then is the acute angle that is the angle between the terminal side and the horizontal axis. So if I go from here to here, starting here and ending here, that's the acute angle. It means it's between 0 and pi over 2. I need to figure out that angle right there. So if I take the angle 3 pi over 2 and I subtract off pi, I just have this little bit left. And that's going to give me my reference angle. So if I take uh, three, 32 pi over 25. If I said over 2, I, I mean it was, it's 32 pi over 25. And I take away pi. So 30. 2 pi over 25, I take away pi, that leaves just that much. And that's going to be my reference angle. So let's see, I need to have a denominator over 25 on both of these, so I'll multiply top and bottom there by 25. So 32 pi minus 25 pi divided by 25. So let's see what that is. 32 pi, I'm just going to do the 32 minus 25, that'll tell me how many pi's I have, and that leaves me with 7. So this is going to leave me with 7 pi over 25, and that's going to be my reference angle. 7 pi over 25. Now if you want to test, remember the reference angle needs to lie between 0 and pi over 2. That's an acute angle. So how can I determine if it's right in the right spot? Well, let's approximate 7 pi over 25. 7 pi divided by 25, that gives me 0 0.8796, 0.8796, and then let's see, pi over 2, that's obviously greater than 0, huh. let's do pi divided by 2, and that gives me 1.57. So, um, 0 0.8796 is between 0 and point what was it? 157, so I know that I have the right reference angle. All right, let's go to the next question. The reference angle of 16, negative 16.13 radians is. Okay, so let me move this up just a little bit. Negative 16.13 radians. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. i got to figure out what quadrant that's in. So... I'm going to approximate negative 16 over 13 using my calculator. 
Let's see, negative 16 divided by 13, and that gives me negative 1.23. Now I can see that negative 1.23 will lie between negative pi over 2 and 0. Okay, so negative 1.23, so this is equal to approximately negative 1.23. And so that means I'm going to be rotating down this direction because it's negative. I know that negative pi over 2 is approximately negative 1.57. And so I can see that negative 1.23 is going to be between 0 and negative pi over 2. So I will approximate it to be about here. So I know that if I continue this arrow down to there, that that angle right there is going to be negative 16 over 13. Now, even though negative 16 over 13 doesn't have the number pi directly in it, doesn't mean it's not radian measure. Okay, so be careful of that. Radian measure does not automatically imply that there is a pi in there because you can easily measure one radian on the unit circle by taking the length of the radius, which is 1, and putting it on the outside edge, curving it around the outside edge to where that length of the arc is 1, that means that that angle right there is 1 radian, all right? So basically, you can have a radian measure that doesn't have pi in it. And it, if you measure the length that you have, say negative 16 over 13, that's, so if I measure down this direction, negative 1.23 units approximately, which should be slightly bigger than 1, that's going to give me an angle of a radian measure of negative 16 over 13. Okay, so don't worry about the pi's being in there. It, does, it doesn't matter. The radian measure can be a number that doesn't have pi. So if I'm going to think about the reference angle, so I can see this is in the fourth quadrant here. And it's between negative pi over 2 and 0, but a reference angle needs to be positive. Right? Remember the previous problem, it has to be between 0 and pi over 2. So in order for this guy to be positive, the radian measure then is going to be the same measurement, but that's negative, that's positive, so it has to be positive 16 over 13. All right? Last question. We got one more reference angle of negative 14 pi over 35. So again, let's go through the steps. Let's figure out what quadrant we're in. So let's approximate negative 14 pi over 35. And remember, since it's negative, we go clockwise rotation around the edge. So let's see, negative 14 pi divided by 35. I'm getting 1.257, negative 1.257 approximately. So if I'm on my unit circle, if I'm rotating clockwise, I go negative pi over 2, negative pi, etc. Negative 3 pi over 2, and then negative 2 pi. That's a clockwise rotation, all right? That's how it works. So I still got to figure out what quadrant we're in. And once I figure out what quadrant we're in, we can start working clockwise rotation. So 1.257. So let's see. Let's see. Minus uh, pi over 2. Let's see what that is. That gives me negative 1.57. So this right here is approximately negative 1.57. So if I'm going to go negative 2.57, that number lies between negative 1.57 and where I started, which was 0. All right, so my angle will be somewhere in here. That angle right there is going to be approximately negative 14 pi. Oops. Negative 14. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> negative 14 pi over 35. That's that angle right there. All right, now... If I figure out the reference angle, again, I want the acute angle that has that same measurement, okay? That looks acute, but it's not. It's negative. So I want that same angle up here. 
So if I want the same angle in the first quadrant, you just actually put a positive symbol on the front of that. 14 pi over 35 will be the reference angle. All right, let me know if anyone has any questions.